So yeah, everything else checks fine. Uh, the electrolytics, I'll cover those two main ones, the 1000 microfarad, the, the bigger capacitors, everything else seems to be polarity correct. So I will now try to remove the offending two capacitors and we shall see how well that goes. If I can ever get this in focus, there we go. So the first one I'm gonna be removing is that one right there. Oops, out of frame. Let's see it again. Yeah, that one right there. I will try to remove. We'll see how well that works. Put my multimeter away for now. Everything else is up to temperature. Let's see how this goes, shall we? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tin these connections the best I can. Make sure I'm... Yeah, you can see it. Good. Try to get this hot. And being the ground plane, it's going to absorb a lot of heat. There's some there. And that one will go much quicker. Good. I'm going to turn the temperature up a bit to about 450. The soldering iron. Okay. Let me get my arm out of there. And now the solder sucker, I guess. And we'll see how well this goes. Seems to be functioning. So I'm going to do the easy one first, the positive terminal. Let's sit for a bit. And that looks okay. Now the hard one, the ground. Let's sit a bit longer. there. Let me, uh, let me see what I'm doing here. Which one did I go for? for? Yeah, that one there. Oh, right here. Now I might have to try to heat that up and then pull it out just because, like I said, the solder, uh, where are we here? I'm trying to keep this in frame. It's hard to do while you're, uh, there we go, right there. So I'm going to try to heat that up and pull it out because I believe I freed up the positive terminal. It's just the negative that's being kind of resilient. Like I said, I don't want to apply too much heat. So let me see if I got the right one here. Need to get some solder on that. Need to get some solder on it. It defeats the purpose of trying to use the solder sucker, doesn't it? But I need heat and heat transfer. Okay, try this again. Oop, wrong direction. So actually, this positive lead isn't off either. You have to be careful doing this way. Don't put too much stress. You will wreck the solder pads. Okay, that side's free. More heat. Come on. Let me just double check that. Yeah, it's still kind of stuck a bit. And there, it's uh, it's off. Oop. No, it doesn't matter. It's not good anyways. Not that dropping capacitors is a bad thing, unless of course you run them over with your car. Yes. So that's a 10 volt, 10,000 microfarad capacitor. And I'm not sure if I hold that right, you can see that it's bulging on the top because of reverse polarity. Surprisingly, it lasts as long as they do. That is that one. So I gotta clean up those holes, hopefully, and then install the other one, which, I believe, one second, trying to not get my arm in the way as much. 
And these are these two here. They're uh, polymer capacitors. They should last a lot longer than the electrolytic. So I will install those and then I'll show you removing one of the uh, faulty uh, smaller electrolytics that are on the board and then uh, go from there. I shall be right back. So as you can see, um, before I put the capacitor in, you can see where the plus is uh, marked. So if you actually put the probes on that, um, you'll actually will see if you put the course the red probe on the positive and then the negative probe on the, I'm sure the black probe on the negative, um, you'll get negative uh, five volts, which proves that yes, it definitely is uh, on the silk screen labeled incorrectly. But this is a well-known problem. So just remember that if you ever recap these boards, that if you'd ever get a CD32, there's a very good chance that these two capacitors at least should be replaced because they are wired in backwards and eventually they will fail. So I'm going to install the other capacitor, like I mentioned before, and then uh, I will show you the remo removal of a surface mount electrolytic. Hello. I successfully removed the one capacitor, as you can see. Um, it took a while for the, uh, the solder sucker to work on it. I had actually I had to reflow both pads and then come from the top and it made clean holes. But one thing I wanted to show is a quick test. You don't actually have to have voltage necessarily, um, especially when it's on the voltage rail. Uh, so a voltage applied to the board to um, see what's positive and negative. So I'll show you. We, I know this pad here is negative because that's the ground plane. So if you put the probe here, what I do is I have my meter set to continuity. So if I short out the two probes here, oh, beep, right? So that's uh, showing you that there's continuity. So I'm going to put this here, so that's on ground, see, ground, ground, there's ground everywhere, I'm touching the tin of the uh, RF uh, modulator. So what we can do is, come down here, this actually says positive here, now watch what happens, that's actually ground. This confirms what we already knew before, and on here. It'll beep for a second and then stop because there's a, you know, it's not complete path to ground. That's why the capacitor is there. So that's a good way to prove that, yeah, even though it's marked positive on the board, it's negative. So you can do that with pretty much any capacitor that's on the voltage rail. So that filters the, uh, the DC voltage. And uh, that's that trick. So I'm going to solder that in place and uh, remove the other capacitor right here and replace that. And then uh, I'll be right back. Hello, I have returned. As you can see, I've replaced the two 1000 microfarad capacitors now with the collect correct polarity. And this is a 470 microfarad capacitor. Now it was a bit larger than the other one that was in there, as you can see here. So using a pair of, uh, what you call it, and you know, those pliers, I kind of angled the pin, like kind of bent it nice and neat, like dog legged it, so it would fit into the two holes, and it's pretty much flush, so I'm pretty happy with that. So that's that part done. This motherboard doesn't appear to use these uh, electrolytic uh, 22 microfarad capacitors, so I shouldn't have to install those, so all the through hole ones are done. And now the myriad of other surface mount capacitors is my next step which is going to take me a while, but it is a, uh, it's going to be a bit of a journey doing that, but I'm going to start with the 100 microfarad capacitors first, the uh, polymer ones here, which apparently never, ever, ever, ever will leak. So for as long as I'm going to have this, I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine because I think it will outlive me easily by several years, according to how well those capacitors are rated. So that should be that. So I'm going to attempt to remove this capacitor first. Now bear with me. I, can, I don't consider myself to be a pro, especially when it comes to surface mount technologies and whatnot. Um, and if you do see something that horrifies you, um, I'm open to suggestions on how to improve my technique. I'm not gonna use a hot air gun uh, like I wanted to because I just find it just stresses the board out too much and you can cause issues if you don't preheat these boards. Um, now I've heard people, I sorry, I've seen people remove these by twisting them off. I'm not a big fan of that either. 
Um, I guess it works. I've done it before, I'm just worried about wrecking the pads. Lifting them would be bad. So I'm going to try just unsoldering one end, see if I can gently lift it up, and then unsolder the other end. And uh, hopefully that will go without incident. If I can zoom in a bit more. Excellent. Okay. So bear with me as I try to increase the magnification of what I'm looking at. Uh, where are my glasses? I always seem to misplace those. Oh, there they are. It's my second pair of glasses. I find if I put two on, I can see really close. Okay, we're at temperature and I'll try not to hit the tripod. I'll try to avoid it as much as I can. And here goes nothing. This is a, try to get it on this. Now it's gonna be easier to do it on these larger ones than the smaller ones. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the way that works. Yeah. Perhaps that was not a great idea. I don't know. Started it now. No. Too much resistance and now it's blocked off the other side. So this approach may not be a good thing. No, no, this is not working out well. Learn from my mistakes, they say. I'm going to I'm gonna try something else and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, so I managed to remove that one. I had to use the twist method, so basically using, uh, you probably can't see that because I'm zoomed in so much, the pliers, gently, and it seems to work. I have seen people do it before, I'm just a bit skeptical. Now these connections have to be cleaned up, so I'm going to put a bit of flux on here, because what happens is when the battery, sorry the batteries, when the capacitor goes bad and spews its guts, it will corrode them a bit, and they don't solder very well, so we want to clean that up. So I'm going to also use a solder blade, a sol solder braid. Yes, speaking used to be one of my things, but uh, we'll try this now. I can get this in the position. Try to clean up these connections a bit. And drag it. Same thing with this one. There. I cleaned up really well. It also takes off residual solder, so now the component will sit flush. So I will go get the 100 microfarad capacitors, which I placed somewhere. One second. It's 10. There they are. And it says 6 volts, so... We shall see how that works. And they are very small, but not horribly small. But hopefully the spacing is correct on them. So I'm just going to try to get this out here one moment. Bear with me. They're in these, uh, we can see it, these packs here. And of course they have a very small piece of, uh, I don't know, kind of like tape over top of it. So they don't fall out. So I have to try to get that out somehow and... Uh, go from there any second now I will remove this uh, I'll be right back this is taking longer than expected okay so I have it removed I'm just gonna move this a bit more center and frame excellent now you can see there's flux everywhere I need to clean that up so q-tip you gotta be careful with q-tips because I don't have ideally you want ones that don't have any fiber on them. All right, basically lintless because they can get caught on these if there's like a, a solder, I don't know, that's sticking up a bit and then of course you put the Q-tip across and it snags it, you can actually rip it off. So you gotta be very careful if you're using Q-tips to put very minimal pressure. So I'm gonna put the alcohol here. There we go. Just isopropyl alcohol, nothing special. Ideally the higher uh, content of alcohol versus water, the better. Yes, to see the sound of cleanliness. That's what everybody wants. Yeah, that's nice and clean. As you can see, 
it is beautiful. Well, close enough. So one thing to remember about polymer capacitors is the line on them is actually positive. Unlike these, like with the electrolytic capacitors, which you can see here, these are negative. So the polymer is backwards, just gotta remember that. And they are marked, but the line means positive. And of course, when I remove this one, I didn't really observe the polarity. So one quick way to check that is I, well, I could go back to my video, of course, and take a look before I remove the capacitor, but let's do it this way. Multimeter time. Okay, so ground is here. Yep, so that's ground, so that's negative right there. That's how I know for sure. Okay, so I will solder that on and we'll see how well that works. So we know negative was oh, right here. Oops, I am making a mess of things. Now I can use that tack flux, see if that helps. Let's, uh, let's give that a shot, shall we? I can also use solder paste as well. This actually might be a good way to do that. I'm, I'm going to try the solder paste. This is the first time ever, solder paste time, because um, it kind of holds it in place and it has the solder plus the flux in it. So I'm going to go get the solder paste and I'm going to give this a shot. First time ever, live. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I'll try to get this better in frame again. One second. Oh, and, and trying to turn this. Good luck with that. One second here. Okay, it's locked down. Now, the solder paste, I will attempt to uh, see how this works. Oh, I moved the capacitor, but that's fine. I have to put the paste on here anyways. I've never used this before, so let's see how this goes. Let's journey through this together, shall we? And is it gonna come out? Good question. I don't know. If I keep dropping it, I'll never know. Let me try this again. It'll probably be a bit, th oh, too much paste. Too much paste. There should be a cap for this, which there is, uh, or not. One second. So that was way too much paste. So let me try to fix that. I am making a mess of things already. Well, this is going well. Excellent. Excellent indeed. I've seen other people do this on YouTube. They never made this mistake. Oh, well. Maybe they practiced first. I don't know. Let's get rid of this. Okay, let's try this now. Because the whole point of this, it's supposed to be solder and flux all in one. Okay, just checking to see if it looks fine. I don't know. Let's see what happens, I guess. Should be able to hold it down. Trying to make sure I'm not lining this up wrong. It move too far to the side? I don't know. It smells funny, I can tell you that much. One. And two. Okay, so we're gonna do this capacitor next because it's another 100. And I will attempt to remove that. One second, I forgot to get some other tools. Okay, so here it goes. I'm gonna use a pair of pliers and gently persuade that one to remove itself. And you're gonna probably see my hand in the way, yes. So I will try to twist this off. I'll zoom out, I guess. So you can see the entire horrifying process of what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna come down straight on top of it. 
oops, without doing that, make sure you don't touch the circuit board as well. Yeah, I'm hitting the other capacitors here. Uh, now they say you're supposed to twist these off. I don't have a lot of room here. I think it's coming off the one end. And it pulled it right out of the actual, uh, so you can see the bottom of the capacitor. But that's fine. That's no big deal there. At least I didn't put extra stress on these. I'm gonna to try to take this plastic cover off. Without any luck. Without any luck. One second here. This is not the way it's supposed to go, by the way. Yeah. I might have to pry that up gently with the screwdriver. Let me be very careful with it. Of course, it's got solder on it from before. So wedge that underneath there without scrapping, scraping the board. Oh my. Oh. Make sure I don't break anything here. Ugh. Damn it. Yeah, took the solder pad right off. Hello. Well, after fixing my blunder of removing one of the pads, like I said, you learn by doing, I have to be much more gentle. Um, I am removing them uh, with the pliers, but I'm twisting them as in turning them, you know, side to side instead of prying up like I did last time, which I should have known better. But that's what it's all about. Learn from your mistakes and you can learn from others, which is actually better. Plus do nothing that way. So I've almost replaced all of the 100 uh, microfarad capacitors. I did fix the trace on the one. I don't think I can zoom into that, but I will try. Let's see down here. Not sure how much this camera will allow me to zoom in. And where is the one in question? Yeah, that one right there. Luckily, the ground point was, uh, I could tie it to the top of that resistor and I ran a wire across to the other side. And I'm gonna put some clear glue or something on that afterwards when I'm done to make sure it does not move. But everything else is going well. Like I said, you gotta be careful with these things because uh, in computer years, they're pretty much older than I am which is kind of bad, actually. So I'm gonna continue with the recapping process, but I'm gonna at least show you one, and hopefully this time it doesn't, won't be followed by swear words. So let me uh, see the one that I want to t tackle next. It's gonna be this one here. Of course, it's awkward to get to because of its current location, but why not give that a shot, shall we? Okay. I'm going to zoom in a bit more, if the camera will allow me. It's, I think it's at its maximum. There we go. So it's going to be the one right by that crystal. So I am going to try my best to uh, not to destroy this one, shall we? I will be careful and I will be patient. So that's the one that we're going to go for. So I'm going to zoom out so I don't get my hands in the way and then we shall see what's going to happen and there we go right by the crystal kind of hard to do this at the same time while you're filming this one's going to be a bit awkward so i can't really get my pliers in there so i'm going to try this way i can't rock back and forth either because that will just have the same effect as before. This is horrible. I don't like this already. It's just awkward to get to. Try to hold this if it's centered. And oops. And just keep twisting it. Eventually, it will. And notice I'm just twisting. There we go. So that is off. Now, I have to get the other parts off here. So I'm not gonna pry up like I did last time because that's what caused the problem. So I'm gonna break these off, the remaining leads that pulled out of the capacitor. 
same idea twisting motion there's one get that off of there same idea here if I can get a good grip on it oh and same idea just there and as you can see the plastic disc uh, came right off so I'm gonna grab that with the pliers gently there and as you can see, I don't know if you can see that from that range. Let me try to zoom in here. A lot of zooming in on this episode. Uh, I gotta find out where I'm going. There we go. Yes. You can see how corroded they are. Um, let me get a pointing device of some kind. Uh, yeah, where are they? Right here. So you can see how they corroded they are here. And here, and that's because they're leaking and they're corroding the, the parts, like I mean, the contacts beneath. Now I have to put flux on that to get that off properly because being corroded, it will not conduct the heat properly, uh, no matter how much you have, and it'll make a mess of things. So what I'm gonna try to do is not destroy the pads because that's bad. So I'm gonna put some uh, flux. Uh, I need my other set of glasses here, oops. This is a very long process, by the way, very, very long. So I'm gonna put a very small amount of flux here and here. Okay, I'm gonna grab the soldering iron, which is over here. Oh, still in focus, looks like it. I don't know how long it'll stay in focus with this in the way, but we'll see what happens. Heat this up. Eventually, Come on, you came off last time. What? Solder the crystal while I'm at it. There we go, now it's coming off. There it is. Get the old lead out of the way. And now the other side. Be patient. Okay, it's pulled off as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the solder braid. Be very careful with the solder braid as well. You can, uh, or desoldering braid, you can literally destroy the pads as well but if you start dragging it while well, it's uh, not hot enough it'll solder itself to the pad kind of and then uh, you'll pull the pad off which is like horrifying actually so we shall attempt to get myself in here without uh, uh, let's try to move that down a bit there we go camera's getting in the way and stuff. So I'm gonna put this on here, let it heat up. Okay, drag it and done. Same thing with the other side, let it heat up. It's kind of warm on the fingers. And there we go. So as you can see, it's uh, a lot cleaner. I'll clean the flux off of that. And this is how I wrecked, yes, yet another pad. So there's two pads I had to jump her. I am not proud of that, but I'm realizing you must be patient. What it was, remember that thing I told you about uh, the Q-tips getting stuck on things if you're not careful? Well, it, it got the capacitor off fine, but no, I was in a bit of a rush and it did that. It literally got caught on probably a small piece of solder or the edge that was on the pad and ripped it right off. That caused me great depression, actually. Actually, I was kind of angry at myself. Um, but now I'm going to take my time. Because time is of the essence, but not necessarily in this case. So instead of going this way or that way, I'm going to go from top to bottom. Because it seems if you do it this way, it's not as apt to get stuck on things. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure this time like before. I'm not in a rush, you know, and you can see there's a lot of dirt happening here. So I'm going to uh, stay away from those edges. As you saw, I carefully did that before. There. So now it's clean. It is uh, ready, oops, sorry. It is ready for the solder. And uh, we will try this in one moment. Okay, let me... Uh, Still in focus, excellent. So it's another 10, say 100 microfarad capacitor. 
and I'm going to put a very small amount of this uh, solder paste on this. I don't know if I can get in from the side or not. I'm trying to give you guys a good view without hitting the camera 500 times during the... Uh... Actually, it's better if I produce a very little bit on the end. It almost reminds me of putting heat sink compound on CPUs. So, put a very small amount here. And squeeze out a bit more. That's all I'm doing. Is, um, uh, you can't see that because it's, I give up. It's too, too shiny. And then I put, squeeze out a bit more. Put it on the other end. And hopefully this will be enough. Okay, this is like I said, very time consuming. All this work for one capacitor. Uh, which I put some float around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay. And why are my tweezers are there? Now these aren't marked positive or negative on the board. Where are we here? I was just, oh, they're there. But this beveled end here is the positive. Negative is the, you can tell by the other ones. Negative is the other side. But I can double check because I just want to make sure. I don't know if this is, judging by the corrosion that was on those contacts, uh, probably was, whatchamacallit, a supply rail capacitor. So a filter capacitor, in other words. So I'm going to ground this here. So negative should be this one. Or not. Nope. It's not making noise. Okay, so it's probably not a supply ground. But that's fine. Um, but I know that's negative just by the polarity of all the other ones. So that is that. Okay, look. I'm going to be careful there. So I'm going to place this with my tweezers in place. And this is a bit of a pain as well. I have it positioned backwards. So I'll do it from around the camera if I can and drop that into place. If you're a surgeon, this might not be such a bad task, but I'm not a surgeon. And as much as I'm going through the hassle of lining this up, it's gonna to wanna to move as soon as I, uh, what you call it? As soon as I try to solder this, okay. Yeah, put that camera in the way, this is a pain in the butt. I gotta try to make sure I have it lined up okay. That's not even close on that side, actually. I actually have a tool that would make this a lot easier. Oh, see, that's what's happening. The scary stuff here. Okay, there we go. Now, I try to solder it. Shadow of my arm. I have no room on this workbench. It's actually my small kitchen table thing. So I'm going to try to hold that down with my finger without moving it and heat that up. There we go. And it looks fine. Shifted a bit, but I can move it with my other. Uh, hand down here because it's, it's on a bit of an angle but I can shift it down. I'm going to finish that off camera because this is almost impossible but I'm going to solder the other end down here and then uh, I'll be right back. And finally there it is soldered in place. I got to clean it up a bit with a bit more of alcohol but it's uh, it is connected and the thing with this is you got to try to put uh, sorry try not to put too much solder on. So checking all the polarity it's fine. And uh, that's it, I will recap the remaining capacitors. And as you can see, there are many that are left like that. So fun awaits me, I tell you, but I'll show you when it's all finished and hopefully everything still works. That's the importance of actually powering everything on when I got it to make sure it actually did work. So at least we can go from that point if something horrible has happened. But anyway, I will be back shortly. Hello. And I have returned for you pretty much instantly for me. This took about six hours to do. 
many capacitors, I haven't really counted how many, but I'm sure it's well over 30 of them. And uh, once I learned from my mistakes on the two with the trace issues that lifted and I of course wired them back and secured them so they do not move, the rest went just fine with the twist technique, not the rock back and forth like it did for some reason the first time. And uh, yeah, everything else went okay. I cleaned the all the pads with uh, flux and the desoldering braid and uh, did them one at a time. I did them in series, of course, like 100 microfarad, then 47 microfarads, and 10, 4.7, whatever. It's still a group at a time. So now I have double checked my work. Everything looks pretty good. And I can zoom in here to the cap section, I guess. Move this a bit more. And that's where they all pretty much reside in that section, all in this area of the board. So it looks completely different than the silver ones that were in there. And I have to say that I would uh, pretty much 75% um, of the capacitors that were on this board leaked. They were bad. So at least uh, they would function, but they wouldn't function much longer or very well. So now the moment of truth, I'm going to hook up the top part, the uh, what you call it, the CD-ROM, and hopefully I didn't make things worse for wear. So I will be back shortly once this is partially assembled. Okay, I have it loosely. I didn't put the shield on on the inside or screw anything in. I just put the two connectors, the connector for the panel here, and of course the uh, CD-ROM together. And uh, just in case I have to take this apart to fix it, which hopefully I did not break anything. Ah, such confidence in my voice. Eh, you never know. These things are so old, and even even after some of the mess uh, screw ups I did, everything else looks fine, and I and you know my screw ups fixed just fine. Everything checks out. You still never know with these. So let's see if at least we get power, shall we? And where is the? There it is. Okay, we do have power. And... Ah, excellent. I got scared there. That uh, bit of lag kind of bothered me a bit. So now let's see if it actually loads Banshee like before. So now this works wonderfully. Um, if you could actually see it. Yes, the door. This works like it's supposed to. So I'm going to grab the disc, which I put on top of the microwave. At least it wasn't in the microwave. That would be bad. And now the ultimate test. So we know the audio works, we know the video works, but let's see if this part works. Okay, it's spinning and it's loading, as you can tell by the spinning CD logo there. And of course, we have to reset this because apparently, like I said, the logo takes up more RAM than this game can tolerate because I guess uh, Banshee wants all two megabytes of chip RAM. Now it's loading again. Excellent. I, once again, did not plug in the joystick, so I'll just wait for this to go through the thing. the intro. And there we go. So I'll do more testing with the joystick later, but at least it still works, which is really, really nice. So I would say this is a success. Of course, time will tell, but um, everything seems to went, uh, went pretty well, barring the two issues I had with the first couple of capacitors I replaced. But like I said, everything else after that went well, I learned. And uh, yes, that's all that matters. So that'll be it for this um, part two of the Amiga CD32 on this channel. We'll be adding some upgrades to this because basically it is an Amiga 1200 in disguise. I'm going to be going to adding some stuff that I have bought. I'm not going to say what it is because it's a surprise. That can actually will make this a full-fledged basically Amiga 1200 with uh, you know the definite advantage of having the CD ROM. So that's it. And as always, thanks for watching.